On the surface, 1.21 seems like a pretty focused and unimportant update. However, that's not true at all. In fact, 1.21 is secretly one of the most important updates in Minecraft's entire history. Because within this update, there are many new things added that don't just change Minecraft, but change how Mojang will update Minecraft from now on. And it all starts with one block, the Auto Crafter. Come on, don't act like you didn't expect this. See, this one single block, while looking unassuming, is such a massive deal, it's hard to explain to you how to comprehend it. So let's start from the beginning, you know, since the Autocrafter was literally one of the first things Mojang revealed about 1.21. Some of you may have forgotten about what it does. And well, its use is in its name. It automatically crafts items. Using a preset pattern in the block, if given the materials to craft, it will craft any block of your choosing as long as it is given a redstone signal. Now, while to you and me, the average Minecraft player, it doesn't seem that much of a big deal, I want you to really think about the technical side of the Minecraft community. Think about what your average redstoner will do with it. Think about what mumbo jumbo will do with it. Think about the absurd, game-breaking, auto-crafting factories that will be made with it. Hell, we can go even further. Perhaps the autocrafter's patterns that you could set could possibly be used for memory for those fancy Minecraft computer things. I don't really know, I'm not a redstone guy, but what I do know of is that the possibilities of the autocrafter are endless. This block automates one of the last things that haven't been automated in vanilla Minecraft, crafting. And that leads me to my bigger point about the autocrafter and arguably the most important point in this video that goes beyond just Minecraft's gameplay and about how the autocrafter being added represents Mojang's philosophy changing when it comes to the game. And what I'm going to say may not make the most sense to you, so try to bear with me for a little bit. I hope I can properly convey my point. But my point is, is that with the autocrafter finally being added, to me, it represents a massive shift in how Mojang develops for redstone and the game in general. Over the years, as Mojang has added more and more redstone blocks and components, the game's limits on redstone have been getting less and less, from the humble beginnings of a 2x2 redstone door, to a massive, fully automated Minecraft mob farm that can drop 6.5 million items per hour. And that's the key word, automation. Because as redstone has gotten more and more advanced in Minecraft, the amount of automated farms increases with each update that adds a redstone component. But there is always an unspoken rule of sorts when it came to Mojang's stance on redstone, at least in my opinion. For example, what separates a technical mod like Create from vanilla redstone? It was always one thing, crafting. Sure, Mojang may add all these new redstone items and ways of making things automated, but there was always a red line that Mojang never crossed and separated vanilla Minecraft from going too far, and it was crafting. No matter what, in vanilla Minecraft, you can never fully automate crafting. Sure, you could set a farm to harvest wood using withers, but if you wanted to craft those wooden stairs, well, you had to craft it yourself. There was no way around it. But now, with Mojang officially adding the auto crafter, they have now broken their unspoken rule about redstone. It shows a difference in Mojang's internal thinking about developing Minecraft. They could very well have less limits than what they add in terms of redstone. Hell, I mean, even just two updates ago, they literally added wireless redstone into Minecraft. The auto crafting being added was inevitable at this point, and now shows that their rule is broken. It shows Mojang's new open-mindedness to potential game-changing redstone. To summarize, the autocrafter represents a shifting point in Mojang's attitude towards redstone, and now that the Pandora's box has been opened, Mojang cannot close it. This is not even talking about what the autocrafter's use itself does to Minecraft. I saw a few comments saying the autocrafter being added pretty much now puts Minecraft in the Industrial Revolution, and I fully agree. This update should be renamed the Industrial Revolution Update. We can literally now make fully automated production lines with the autocrafter now being available. This update is literally centered around the industrial revolution. I am not crazy. Look at some of the blocks that have been added in this update, like like this one. It literally looks like an industrial walkway block or, or this block, it looks like an industrial brick block. Honestly, all they have to do next is add the pollution update, and then we'll really be there. But now that we're in the industrial age, we won't be needing this thing anymore. Honestly, I think we all hit the anvil. Though, it is a shame. My favorite part about it is how it does increase damage from how high it's dropped. Now if only that part of it could be added as a weapon. Wait. That's right, we're gonna be talking about the mace. Because if it was just the autocrafter that was important, this update would only go down as a footnote mentioning the autocrafter. But with the mace, this is what truly makes 1.21 one of the most important updates. Now remember, the last time a new melee weapon was added was all the way back in 2018 in the aquatic update in the form of the trident, six years ago. 
Wait, damn, really already? So any new melee weapon added is already going to be a big deal. But what Mojang has done here is really, really creative and just genuinely so fun. As mentioned earlier, the mace uses the same mechanic as the anvil. The higher you fall from, the more damage you do. Plus, if you hit your target, it negates all fall damage. Now this would have been enough to make me like the mace, cause if you ever tried to use anvils to kill someone, it's very satisfying to do, but it's so hard to hit, and you really only get one shot at it. So having this in weapon form is just so much better, plus it leads to some epic clutch potential, and I think for the first time, a weapon with a risk reward factor. But this is all without talking about its enchantments. Now of course, you have the usual, you know, increased damage dealt, unbreaking, but the real highlight here is the windburst enchantment. Basically, if you hit your target with the mace, depending on the level of windburst enchantment, you get launched up in the air, which is just such a fun and unique enchantment that allows for so many sandbox opportunities. Like with this weapon and enchantment, you can do this in vanilla Minecraft. It's just so fun. And I still can't believe that this is in vanilla Minecraft. And I feel like it's crazy not enough people are freaking out about how cool this all is. But of course, let's be honest, right? While the mace is an amazing weapon against mobs, this doesn't really change much. All you need is an axe or sword and you're good to go. And while yes, you can use the mace in very specific circumstances like dunking on a warden and one-shotting them, for the average single player enjoyer, it's much easier 9 out of 10 times to just use a sword even if the mace is more fun. However, the mace is important for a different reason, in a different part of the Minecraft community. See, while in single player, the mace is maybe a little overkill, in the PvP community, the mace is game changing. Now I'm not going to pretend like I'm a PvP man myself, I used to main 1.8 in Bed Wars, but that was as far as it went, but modern day PvP, I have no idea. But with the addition of the mace, I can imagine how this one weapon is currently changing the meta. Think of all the crazy things that the PvP community will pull off with this one weapon. This thing is like the king of sneak attacks. I'm just having a minute here just imagining all the downright genius ideas people will come up with, and I'm very curious to see it all. Even I'm considering getting into 1.9 PvP just to use the mace. So if you know any good servers, let me know down in the comments below, that would be great. Imagine all the little mini games and clips people will hit with the mace. Hell, if Dream ever gets back to uploading manhunts again, maybe we'll see a sick clip with the mace. You never know. With the weapon in this new, it's too early to say. Overall, the mace and the unique mechanics it has really just makes it almost as important as the autocrafter is, though for a different reason, that being the PvP meta. Now I wish I could tell you all the ways it will affect PvP, but like I said, I'm not a PvP man, so I just can't really predict what will happen, and the weapon is just so new that I just don't know. All I know is that the mace is going to change the PvP meta forever, and this update will go down as extremely important to that side of the Minecraft community. Speaking about community, right? Can you guys relate to when you go on a multiplayer server, and when you find a structure like a dungeon or something, you get excited only to find out it's been looted? Or this one, which is more frustrating, right? You go to the end to find an elytra, but every single end city you find has already been looted, so there ends up being a monopoly on the server, and you have to buy an elytra in order to get one because of the monopoly. Yeah, that's a real problem. Problem. If only Mojang found a way to update the game to fix this, maybe using some sort of trial chamber. Wait. So Mojang has added something really interesting with the new trial chambers. Specifically, the way trial chambers gives players loot. And the way they've added this has made me have a theory of some sorts. But that's for later. So what am I talking about? Well, to explain, for those who haven't yet completed the trial chambers, within the trial chambers is the vault block. This is Mojang's ingenious answer to multiplayer survival server's biggest problems, that being structures already being looted. That's right, while I mentioned it earlier, if you've ever played on a survival server, you know about this problem. Joining a server, exploring the world, finding a structure that looks untouched, only to find that it's been looted. But don't you worry, the vault block will fix this. In fact, Mojang have designed this specific block with this problem in mind. And instead of explaining why myself, I'll just let Mojang tell you why in their own words about the vault. One of the things we've noticed in the multiplayer Minecraft experience is that unfortunately, the bigger the server and the longer that it's been up, the more that these structures throughout the world get looted and kind of expired. So any other player that comes in or any other group of players that come in can't really get that experience again. Unlike chests, vaults can be looted by an unlimited amount of players, so your friends can come in afterwards and continue to have some great loot from the trial chambers. And what we've designed this feature is for even future players to feel like they can visit any structure they want. Each player can only unlock a single vault 
once. What this means is that players still have to go out and actually explore to find different structures. Yeah, so needless to say, I just love this edition so much. It just makes multiplayer so much better for me personally, and it really just makes me feel like my voice is heard by Mojang. But of course, why is this so important? Let's be honest, from a gameplay standpoint, the loot isn't exactly game changing beyond the mace hammer. So what's so important about it? Well, here comes my theory about the vault, my game theory. So my theory, right, is them using this new looting system for the trial chambers is actually them experimenting and testing a new way of looting end cities for a potential end update. Yup, you heard me right. Remember when I mentioned earlier about how on multiplayer servers, Whenever you try to find an NCD for an Elytra, the NCD is always looted by another player. Well, it's pretty clear that Mojang is aware of this on some level. In the video I showed some time ago, they literally mentioned, The bigger the server and the longer that it's been up, the more that these structures throughout the world get looted and kind of expired. So they know the problem, and the vault is their solution to that problem. And of course, the NCDs is where the problem is the worst, because everyone wants an Elytra. But of course, getting an Elytra on a multiplayer server is hard, especially especially because it's so much easier to get more elytras if you already have an elytra. So my theory is that in a future end update, whether that be in next update or in 10 updates, they will 100% change the end cities to drop the elytra similar to how the vault does, so an unlimited amount of players can get access to the elytra without coming across an already looted end city. I am a 100% believer in this theory of mine, and it's not too far-fetched. I honestly hope they implement this new looting system into all new and pre-existing structures. It just makes the multiplayer experience so much better for everyone. And so this new change in Mojang's attitude towards looting structures is what makes the vault so damn important because it represents Mojang's new approach to new structures from now on, and I guarantee you, when the end update comes out, what I have predicted will come to pass. Just like how I keep passing by this 30 pack of Mexican Coke in Costco. In fact, please like and comment on this video so the algorithm pushes the video enough so I can buy this 30 pack. Subscribing also helps. And I know I've been glazing this update for the entire video, but you actually want to know where Mojang actually fumbled in this update? Well, in making this update, they arguably missed the most important thing they could have changed, and that has to be the Phantom. If they actually fixed it, this update would have been the most important one ever. In fact, click on this video here if you'd like to see my version of a Phantom update and why I hate it. Like and subscribe.